Cheapo. Ah, Poundland special time once more. And it's been a hell of a time for pound shops around here in Norwich recently. We finally had a Pound World open, we had another Poundland open, and then another Poundland open, like a really massive one, directly opposite an existing Poundland, and inexplicably they both still seem to be open, which makes no sense, because it's like a one minute walk from one to the other across the road. I presume the old one will close at some stage. Maybe. Either that, or soon the whole world will be Poundlands. And what a future that will be! Futures containing things like this. Yep, it's another original figure series from Poundland, presumably taking in a bit of Game of Thrones with Kingsguard. There he is, Jamie Lannister in all his glory, except it's obviously not. So what have we got here then? Knights. Yep, kind of guessed that bit. Anything on the back? Nope. It'll be fantastic, won't it? Oh, can't see you. Oh yes, there we are. I was nearly worried for a second. Nought three sad onions, the usual works. And basically, yeah, he's got an axe bigger than he is. He's got quite a nicely detailed hat with a sort of golden bird thing going on. He's got a slightly worrying face. Looks a bit like a Scottish stand-up comedian who's just told a very wry joke. And he's in a very odd pose. Let's get him out and see what he's actually like. This could take some time. It didn't. Right, here he is. Yeah, that pose actually is something slightly more worrying. Um, can he hold this in two hands? Nope, definitely not. Well, let's put that in... Hmm, yeah, okay, that is confusing me. Just a quick look on the face. Slightly worried about the eyes, but the paint job's actually better than most Poundland stuff. And on goes his hat, and here he is, ready to defend the realm from people who've been painted properly. Um, yeah, the legs are kind of... If he had different weapons, I could sort of see this working, but uh, frankly, no. Looks like a badly designed Soul Calibur character. Oh well, you go over there with your weird candy-striped um, jumper, and we shall look at another one in the series. Somebody who seems to have just been stabbed with an arrow and is trying to get it out. Very stern face on this one. Is a noise he's probably making. Got a fantastic horse on his helmet though, would actually make it so heavy that he probably wouldn't be able to wear it. And his weapon looks like some sort of thing for, I don't know, testing a wind tunnel. Yeah, nice English flag on the front of your armour there. We're all very impressed and we're even more impressed by the way that you can seemingly do the splits in plate mail. Yeah, not entirely convinced with the poses on this one. Oh well, better look at another one then. Oh god. This one is quite clearly a rotting corpse. Far too many teeth bared, skin gone back, hair sort of randomly painted. Beautiful hat though, reminds me of one of the heroes of my magic games. Um, interesting, very Soul Calibur-esque sword there actually. And the pose, I don't know what the bloody hell is going. Come on, I want to see this one out. Come with me. Ah. Come on, put your hat on, because frankly your face is bloody terrifying. There we are. Oh my god, there's like some massive scar or something on it. Is that deliberate? Nope, that's just bad painting by the looks of it. Blimey. He seems to have noticed it though. Look, like, oh bloody hell! Me face is but oh no, everything's better. Well, nearly. Hat doesn't fit on. Oh guys, it doesn't fit over his hair. You give him this cool hat and then he can't wear it. Where's his crazy sword? There it is. Yeah, yes, you heathens will be stopped from entering the lands of the king. There we are, I could write the next Game of Thrones book. No, Song of Ice and Fire, isn't it? I don't know, I'm confused by this man whose hat won't fit on. I can't help feeling all that's really going to do is attract arrows, but I do like the uh, sort of dragon, hairy dragon skull thing it's got on the top. Gets extra points, nice moulding. Anyway, if you'd like to know where these figures came from, here's a foreign version that I've been sent. $2.20. Crusade Knights is Knights Diam. And this is Sir Lancelot, apparently. Slightly different to our version. We seem to have a lower quality moulded head with less detail. However, ours looks sort of quite pleased with himself. Whereas this one looks bloody horrified. Ooh, ooh. He's just seen the rest of his pose in the mirror and realised how he's going to feel in the morning, I reckon. Knights Unequaled is the name of the game, and the description on the back is longer than I remembered. And what is it? Medieval Europe, Templar Knights. Knight came from aristocracy as that of professional soldiers from childhood to accept close combat training. Knight's whole body was wrapped brigandine in the thorax and abdomen. <laughs> thorax. Bloody hell, if that's not a worry... <laughs> to do with um, 
machine translation, I don't know what is. Thorax. An abdomen, shoulders, back and thighs, and other parts, a monolithic steel armour to build. Wore a closed helmet, metal mask to protect the face and body mounts is also a suit of armour A scales. Good, you wouldn't want B scale armour. Knights of the whole suit of armour weighed 80 pounds. Vice. Okay, they also apparently stop prostitutes. Thus, knights' horses are specially selected varieties that can withstand an armed knight 300 eye pounds. Eye pounds, of course, being copyright of Apple. Knights of weapons, including a shield, a spear, and yibbing wide ipe blade. Hmm. Knight assault shield when the left hand pull right hand spear, spear themselves caught in the armpit, a powerful impact on breaking enemy positions, and then unplug the ipe stabbed nearby enemies. Made in China. Yep, no shit, Sherlock. Well, um, I like these bizarre 3D renders of the characters, but yeah, I don't really think they're going to be top of any children's Christmas lists. But i tell you what is top of their Christmas lists. Expensive mobile phones. And look, here's a suitable case for an iPhone 5 that I found in Poundland. And here's a sort of strangely gormless woman with a phone strapped to her head. Uh -huh, is the noise she appears to be making. Protects from scratches and dirt, easy access to all buttons and features, tough, durable design. Yeah, 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 yeah. Signal X. It's pound land for technology. Basically, it's just a sort of generic case for your phone. They're all very much like this in pound land. Quite a soft rubber, fit around it quite well, and do actually provide good protection, which is something. But I can't quite get over this massive and ridiculous yellow bow on the back. Surely it's just going to mean you can't put it in your pocket properly. It's going to catch on things, and eventually, I was going to say eventually just rip off. It's actually very hard to get off. No, oh, and is already ripped. Mm -mm, your guarantee of quality. Actually, the reason I hate this mostly is because it reminds me of the Keith Lemon film, where the plot basically revolves around the fact that he sticks a lemon sweet on the back of his phone and some other stuff happened and the audience walks out. Literally, that's not a joke. Um, but yes, there we are. If you want to protect your phone and look ridiculous and be incredibly impractical at the same time, Poundland have got you covered. And I'll tell you what else they've got covered. The upcoming World Cup with their new, yep, another range of original figures. They can't get enough of them. Pro footballer. Football. Green space for drawing your own artwork. And a man with a broken spine. And a football and a base. Fantastic. Nothing on the back whatsoever. Fantastic. Face is actually remarkably well done. Looks kind of a sort of, I don't know, looks older than most footballers would. Got a little bit of an Elvis look to him. Quite like that, actually. Compared to the faces of those bloody knights, it's fantastic. Anyway, let's see if we can unbreak his spine and get him to play us some soccer -y football stuff. Right, uh, I don't understand what that's for, so we'll therefore ignore it. He can stand in there like that. <coughs> ah, chiropractic. And, um, uh, there we are. Thumbs up. Yes. I can't really understand this one. I th this base is clearly made for something else, because it's got like a plinth on it for something, and there's a little hole for putting a flag or something, and it looks nothing like grass. In fact, he appears to be playing football on green cobbles. Good for him. But that pose, he just... Well, it looks like he's about to trip over the ball, and he doesn't really know where he's going. It's a very odd-looking thing. You know, definite centre of gravity problems there, old son. Can we help that with your arms? The answer to that is most certainly no. Oh well. If your kid is really into football, to the extent that he will accept anything that looks vaguely like a footballer, that's exactly what he needs. I'll tell you what he doesn't need, though. This other design, which I think is based on 1980s mid-year. It's hard to say. Um, Poe's looking... I don't know, is the Poe's looking slightly better? Seems like he's about to fiddle with himself. I'm not particularly impressed with that. Come on. Come on, Midge. Come out. Ugh. Maybe the lead singer of Ultravox, but that doesn't mean you can uh, play with yourself on the football pitch. Uh, ooh, definite problem with his hair there. There's <laughs> oh, look, he's got like a Beckham Mohican, but they've kind of filled in at the sides, but one side more than the other. If we can actually show it to you in focus, leaving him looking like he should be probably suing his barber. Um, so that goes on there. That goes on there. Yeah, and again... Well, he, I suppose he might be kicking the ball. Again, he looks kind of not particularly interested in it. Don't know about that. Move your hands up. It'll be much better for everybody. There we are. His head's too small, I just realised. Like, frighteningly too small. Oh, well. This means nothing to me. Vienna. Right, what's next? 
The answer, of course, is an Egyptian excavation kit sent to me from abroad. With a rare naught to five sad onions. Ooh, with a slightly more... I don't know how to describe that face. Sort of more blank stare than usual. I'm perhaps he's just horrified by the fact it doesn't say naught to three. Who can say? So, I've been sent many of these things over the years, and I very rarely look at them, to be honest, because they're all pretty similar. They're a lump of chalky stuff that you pull to bits, and there's something inside. We can apparently dig it out, not um, in the 70s funk sense, but in this literal sense of getting a small pharaoh's casket type thing going on. So, I'm going to put a plate down, I think. Yes. Told you, I wasn't lying, and therefore keep the sofa at least a bit clean. Oh, good God. It's got that uh, Greenbrier International address on it. Ah, as long as Greenbrier are involved, we're all happy. So, that's that. And here's the brush, so you can go... Okay, you probably shouldn't be using the brush yet, I would imagine. This is exactly how Indiana Jones does it. Oh, I'm bored already. Go on. Oh, bloody hell, I can't quite crack this one. Oh, there we are. That's got it. Oh, so much for my keeping everything clean idea. And here we are. We've unearthed it. I imagine if you were a bit more patient, you could probably spend a bit longer and have a bit more fun on that. Dun, 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 dun. It's nicely painted and quite nicely detailed. Actually, I'm quite surprised by the quality of the lump of plastic inside. But here we are, Tutankhamun, the ruler of the free world, or whatever the hell he was. Actually, I don't think it was a particularly free world in Egypt at that time, was it? Frankly, I can't remember. The last time I saw anything Egyptian was that extra scene at the end of X-Men Days of Future Past. Well, that's that then. You can get all sorts of different things, little dinosaur skeletons you have to put together afterwards, but they all have the same thing in... well... the same thing in common, which is they get horrible chalky mess everywhere and it's just not worth the effort to get whatever's inside out. Marvellous. Probably a very effective way to smuggle drugs, though. There's a thought for you. So, next! They're mongos, they're grinding, they're mongo grinders! I've been sent so many of these over the years. I presume this is supposed to be like a full price thing, but somehow wound its way into every pound shop in the universe. Secret passcode inside, log on to mongogrinders.com for fun and games. Or as you've probably already guessed, log on to mongogrinders.com for an expired domain that is now trying to sell you stuff. Bendable figures from Wild Republic spark your imagination. Hands and feet hangs to board something? Well, this doesn't have any hands or feet. It's a frickin' octopus. Yes, I think the idea behind Mongo Grinders is they're cool animals on skateboards. And that's pretty much it. And they're also called things like Blowout, which is a slight worry. Um, meet the Mongo Grinders, an outrageous group of skateboard buddies who share the love of nature and a thirst for adventure. These skate dudes first started out as fast friends looking Nobody cares. Planet Earth is our only skate park. Treat it with respect. Or move to Mars. The choice is yours. So, what are these things actually like? They actually look very high quality, um, but that could be extremely, extremely wrong. Right, we've got crappy plastic skateboard with Mongo grinders written on it. Still sounds like some sort of insult. Maybe it's like an insult for Ming the Merciless, I don't know. Wasn't this planet Mongor, actually? And yeah, here we are, bendy figure with, like, suction cups on, well, I would say the hands and feet, but it's kind of neither. He's just managed to glue some shoes to himself and is looking very wry. Oh, look at that. It's because he's so cool and radical, man. Do these actually stick on? Oh, yeah, works quite well. He said one of them immediately coming off. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Well, it vaguely sticks. I'm going to rescind that comment. Uh, yes, well, I mean, they're higher quality than most Poundland stuff, but I can imagine why they did end up in Poundland. I don't think weird animals on skateboards is really something that's very down to the kids at the minute. But hey, there's plenty of them. We've also got this wolf wearing a backwards cap, doing his thing with his snaggle tooth. Yeah, nice waistcoat, mate. And an elephant 
with a bandana, which is again not a phrase I ever thought I'd be using. Weirdly, the one I was sent the most is actually that giraffe. Uh, if we look back here, Rocket the giraffe. Um, and I can't find any now. I can only imagine I've got like a cupboard full of them that I will discover one day. Also, we had Half Shell the turtle, Indy the iguana, Primo the elephant, Kick Flip the frog thing, Fakey the gorilla, Nose Grind the rhino, backslide the alligator or crocodile, I can't tell, bail the wolf, ollie the octopus, boneless the shark, shark really? And blow out the lion. Well, I can only imagine that was one of the least successful toy ranges in history, which is why the whole bloody lot ended up in Poundland. But not like this quality toy! <laughs> Oh yes, fantastic, a back with another fake robot, specifically a robot converter. Three to collect. They all look like whatever the hell this is. Um, what were the three to collect? Well, there's this one which apparently turns into a tank, there's a green mess that turns into some sort of excavator, and a crap truck that turns into an equally crap robot. Product and colour may vary from photo. Great. Why don't you just include a photo of a bloody ferret or something instead? So, these never ever end well. Oddly, they don't begin well either. So, this is the robot. Apparently, the cheapest plastic imaginable. I feel like it's going to shatter under my fingers. And um, that that's the head, is it? Does that look like a head to you? Yep, yeah, that's got to be the head. Well, it's where a head should be, that'll do. Um, it's got like a claw for one hand, a claw for the other hand, a bit of a stick, which presumably will be the top of the tank's gun or so. I'm very confused by this. And now I'm going to have to try and transform it, where I expect it to basically shatter into pieces almost instantly. Right, that's a good start. It's not broken yet. Um, presumably this goes into there like that. There's like a hole for that little peg. Eh, yep, there we are. Uh, that goes up, yeah. This is all making sense. That, oh yeah, actually this is quite easy. Uh, that would then go across to here. Do you want... I don't know if I get my finger caught in it. And there we are! It's a future tank thing. The tank doesn't look too bad, actually, as compared to the robot. The turret doesn't actually turn because it's uh, caught on the side on that peg there. So it just sort of looks like a tank as opposed to doing the whole rotating gun thing that tanks are actually for. But never mind. Off you go to defend the world from Megatron. Or be Megatron. I don't know. I'm not going to limit your options. And that's the lot from Poundland. Except, no, it isn't. Because, wait for it, I've got to come find the box, here we go. Found these in there, absorbing water beads. These things are fantastic. I'm not going to bother showing you because uh, my mate Mistake has actually already done a video on it. It'd be much easier just to link to his, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to stop now. But yeah, if you can find those for a quid, they're really good fun to play around with. Unlike everything I have shown you here today. Which, frankly, were a big bag of shite. Unless your children are really into skateboards and half-human animals with weird shoes, in which case, bonanza. Subscribe for more.